Mortal Kombat has introduced to the gaming world some of the most iconic characters who are instantly recognized even by those who have never played the game. But throughout the years, there have been many characters that just didn't have any success due to several reasons including poor signature moves, bad storyline, or simply the character in and of itself. In this list, we're counting down the worst characters in Mortal Kombat. You participate in the most important Mortal Kombat in history. Number 10. Striker Striker was introduced in Mortal Kombat 3 as a policeman whose main job is to protect Earthrealm citizens from Shao Kahn's army. But what's so funny is that his attire looked more like a teenage skateboarder rather than an officer. This is actually the main reason why Striker has appeared in completely different uniforms throughout the games, but despite everything, this guy still remains one of the least popular fighters out there. Number 9. Reiko Oh, Shao Kahn knows about that? Tell him I will no longer enter his chamber or wear his helmet. But just between us, his helmet will belong to me in due time. Not much is known about this mysterious warrior except the fact that he's a Shao Kahn wannabe, not only for his attire which shares a notable similarity to Shao Kahn's, but also because of the fact that he often likes to sneak into Khan's chamber room and wear his helmet, just to have a taste of the magnificence of being a real emperor. I have discovered that Reiko, formerly my most trusted general, has been entering my private chamber to wear my helmet. Find him and tell him he faces death if I find my possessions tampered with again. Number 8. Meat Many argue whether Meat should be considered an actual character because he only served as the model used for characters who are skinned alive from fatalities in MK4. But the fact of the matter is that he was given an entire storyline in MK Armageddon, but for some reason, not much effort was put into his signature moves which are mostly borrowed from other characters, making him one of the flattest and most boring fighters to choose from. Right. Number 7. Shujinko I am Shujinko, champion of the Elder Gods. I am searching the realms for artifacts that will aid in the fight against evil. My quest has led me here. Despite being the main protagonist of Mortal Kombat Deception, Shijinko is one of the least popular combatants out there. This comes as no surprise, since he got bamboozled more than all other characters combined. As an adventurer, Shijinko traveled the realms and learned the combat skills of many warriors, but at the same time, his ego drove him into making many mistakes such as helping agents that are members of the Brotherhood of Shadow Clan and acting like a mercenary at times. But all these mistakes really pale in comparison to when he unknowingly and foolishly served the Dragon King Onaga by bringing together the lost Kami Dogo from the Six Realms. For now, I will take these artifacts you have so dutifully collected for me. I am afraid they will not make it into the hands of the Elder Gods after all. Number 6. Boraicho You're drunk. Go back to sleep. Just like the case of Shijinko, Boraicho isn't really a big of a deal when it comes to his fighting style or storyline. Despite being a trainer, he is in no way considered a well-rounded combatant by any means. In fact, he has usually topped lists of the worst movesets and fatalities. That's a stinky one. <laughs> the Raicho wins. Fatality. Number 5. Kano. If you look at Kano for the first time, the closest character that you'd associate him with is the Terminator, thanks to his eye implant. But the reality is that Kano's look doesn't really fit his personality, since he isn't even close to being the badass assassin that the Terminator is, and that is for several reasons. First, Kano's recurring rivalry with Sonya Blade and the Special Forces doesn't work in his favor whatsoever. I mean, getting your ass handed to you by a woman every single time you fight her just doesn't make sense, especially for a leader of a major clan. Besides, Kano's usually depicted as a backstabbing criminal who's willing to ally himself with anybody for just money. You know Melina's location. And a whole rebel army. It's gotta be worth at least 50. Number 4. Baraka When Shao Kahn discovers that our assault has failed, our punishment will be severe. 
The problem with Baraka and the entire Tarkatan race is that they've all got the role of servants, despite their large numbers and impressive superpowers. According to the storyline, the Tarkatans populate the vast wastelands of Outworld, but yet their loyalty has always been committed to Shao Kahn, the same tyrant who conquered and invaded their lands. But at least he passed down his throne to a half Tarkatan Melina after his demise at the hands of the Elder Gods. How dare you! I succeed Shao Kahn by his decree! Succeed him you have, but Outworld demands new leadership. Number 3, Mavado. I am Mavado of the Red Dragon Clan in Earthrealm. Our organization is stockpiling red coins for use in covert activities. Despite being one of the most prominent members of the Red Dragon, Mavado is the only character that does not possess any supernatural abilities, making him one of the weakest villains in the game. In fact, even his signature weapons are actually borrowed from Cabal, a more superior member of the same clan. Number 2, Shang Tsung. If you defeat all of your opponents, you will face one final challenge. Me. A powerful deadly sorcerer who served as the final boss in the original Mortal Kombat, Shang Tsung appeared to be the baddest villain of them all. They even placed him after the almighty Goro in the original game. But as the story of Mortal Kombat progressed with the release of later installments, we got to learn more about his storyline and background, which revealed that he's just another minion of Shao Kahn. Even his most unique ability of absorbing souls to rejuvenate himself was granted to him by the same leader who eventually drained all the souls from him as a punishment for failing to win the tournament. Number 1. Quan Shi You will serve me in the nether realm. Being the most prominent sorcerer in the game, Quan Shi is powerful in the black arts but very weak in physical combat as shown in his confrontation with Sonya Blade. But Quan Shi isn't just weak, he's also a thief, an instigator, and a betrayal all at the same time. After all, he's the one who stole Shinnok's amulet to travel between the realms, revived the Dragon King Onaga, and has betrayed his only trusted partner Shinnok in more than one occasion. In addition, unlike Shao Kahn and other villains, Quan Shi usually resorts to incitement and provocation in order to achieve his sinister goals, since he isn't powerful enough to face his adversities in physical combat. A good example is the rivalry between Sub-Zero and Scorpion, which he ignited in order to make sure he got away with the murder of the Shirai Ryu clan. I created Scorpion from Hasashi's soul after he died. We observed the agreement. The letter, not the spirit. You are owed nothing. Did I leave out a character that you despise? Let us know in the comment section below. For more, make sure to like the video and subscribe to Game Illusion.